Alright, so now I'll show you how to do a BPR render. BPR stands for Best Preview Render in ZBrush, and then it's an even higher quality render than the the uh, previous one we did before. That's best, but we probably don't need it this time because uh, we are rendering very different views. And then uh, maybe next time when you're trying to composite a very nice uh, one defined view of a model where you actually need to composite from one view very cleanly like this. This is what it actually generates from the BPR render pass. Okay, so there's a there's a normal shading, there's a depth pass, there's a shadow pass, there's a mask, there's a SSS which is a subsurface scattering and you can have ambient occlusion map as well. And you can tweak all the settings over here. You know, you can on ambient occlusion, you can have more flat shadows, you can start changing this up, you can get a little bit complicated. Uh, more, and uh, if you don't have it on, you won't be able to tweak over here, so you need to go back here and on transparent. If you want things to be transparent, then you'll be able to see it. If you want to open up multiple tabs in uh, ZBrush, you can hold down shift, you, you'll be able to open multiple. If not, one time you'll be only able to open one at a time. Okay, if I open one, another one will close. But if you hold down shift, you can open another one at the same time. Shift, shift, shift. Okay. Anyway, I'll keep the render pass open. Uh, another one I'll show you is uh, BPR shadow. So BPR shadow over here is actually uh, it's actually quite good to change this. So in my PDF, I've shown you some comparisons of uh, a value of 10 to those with a value of 5 those image with a value of 1, how the BPR looks like. So I'm not going to probably show on this video because rendering takes time. And then, the, but I'll, I'll show you how it compares. Okay, so this is a value of 5, this is a value of 10. So you can see from the image how much uh, sharper it was. And then just a little bit of blur makes it so much more realistic. So probably a blur value of 10 is pretty good. And then, um, same for this model, value of 5 blur, value of 10 blur. And then it also depends on what you want, you guys. So uh, if your image you want a very harsh shadow, then maybe put your blur value smaller. Okay, so that's what you do to do uh, when with the render pass that you get. And then when you want to render like this, the camera angle is already set up, and then you just press this button here. Okay, so I'll change this angle for you, and then I'll do a render. Okay, so now this is going to render and then the, the loading bar will take place over here. So it will take about 1 minute and 30 seconds on my computer. Still a little bit of time though. So for this video, I'll just jump and uh, show you the end result. Okay, so the end result I have from that render is something like this. Okay, so from the last one, this is a subsurface pass. You can copy this. And uh, this one is a shadow pass, and then I can paste it over here. Wait, did I paste it? Paste it. No, I didn't paste it correctly. Let me do that again. So copy, paste it here. Oh, because my image is... Uh, I should change it to... Uh, actually, what's going on here? Why can't I just copy and paste? Supposed to be so easy. Um, didn't expect me to get stuck in Photoshop, but I guess that happens. This is SSS. Okay, this is the uh, normal beauty, I guess. Normal best render. This is a BPR best render, sorry. BPR best render. This is a depth pass. So if ever you want to render like this, it is for some compositing purpose. So this is for mask, which uh, gives you the whole silhouette. So you can magic wand like this, and then you can group all the layers, and then you just crop them up. So now I can actually change the background color of my project if I want to do so. You know, maybe I can put him in desert. Maybe I can put him a little bit of gradient. I'm just showing you what is possible. Uh, for future reference. I think this is pretty cool, but I want it the other way around. So maybe something like this. And then the, in this, in 
this folder here, I have this mask that is uh, covering everything. So all the black area is being subtracted and uh, it only shows here. So I essentially cut all my layers up with this setting. So if I want to do that, I can. So lastly is uh, shadows. I'll just grab the shadows and put it back. This is a shadow. Okay, so under shadow, probably I should change it to multiply. So if I want more shadows, I can use my shadow to get more shadow. If I want more depth, I can use this to control the depth. I can do a blur on certain areas. The white areas will be in focus. The black areas will be all blurred out, things like that. And then uh, subsurface scattering, you will be able to use it to make it more transparent on the skin areas okay so uh, yeah you can you'll be able to tweak it around and make something work for you maybe I just change this to overlay it can even work well because overlay is just such a good blending mode right okay so just to show you what we can do with uh, uh, BPR plus rendered okay so this is uh, just now I took 1 minute 30 seconds I came back here it's all rendered and then you would left click on each of these renders, left click and then I'll just save it out as a PSD like this. So that's what I did just now. And then I save it out neatly in each in each uh, different PSD file and then you can also save them as a PNG file. No, sorry, I guess you can only save them as TIFF file. So yeah, why not just save it as PSD file, okay? And then now I have an AO pass too. Let me bring it in. AO ambient occlusion which is one of the very important passes let's be honest makes a lot of small details nice so maybe this one I can call it the character ambient occlusion AO pass so with the Ambient occlusion pass, I can add in small details on all the curvices and the, the, uh, the more, sh the more uh, he hidden areas, the areas where objects are close to each other. And then I can just adjust the brightness saturation a little bit. I can control this a little bit. Okay, so if you want to uh, do, a, do a BPR render, okay, you, there's a lot of ways you can adjust the composite and the lighting more in Photoshop and uh, it has potential when you are doing this for one single view nicely. Alright, so that's all I have for this video. Okay, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.